don't let flashy marketing sway your clinical decision making. What I want to talk about today is how marketing has a tendency to sway the dental industry to their wants. And I'll give you a prime example. Recently, I saw a report that was analyzing different drills that were used for placing implants. So the drills clearly are the, are the devices that create the osteotomy. And what the conclusion of the paper was, and to the benefit of a particular company, was that if you use our drills, the insertion torque that you receive will be higher. And therefore, that would be good. Okay? But let me explain to you what's going on here. Most reputable companies, when they engineer their, their implant, they engineer a set of drills that are specifically designed in terms of their shape to create the perfect osteotomy for their product. So if you were to take a, a, a brand X drill and say, well, brand X drill says it's a four millimeter drill and use it for brand Y implant as, because brand Y had a four millimeter drill, you might not be getting anywhere close to the manufacturer's recommended, recommended osteotomy. So what happens is, is that we have different shapes to our implants. Some are parallel walled, some are tapered, and some are progressive tapered. All of those different shapes need to be taken into account when we design the, the actual drill. As an engineer, those drills are designed to go to a specific pitch diameter, which is halfway between the minor and major diameter. That's specific for an implant. Well, clearly, if you use a third-party drill set that's designed to work with multiple implants, what's happening is you're not getting the hole perfectly designed to match up with the said implant that you're going to place. And clearly, some of those cases are going to result in less insertion torque, and some of them are going to result in higher insertion torque. But the conclusion of this paper that I referenced at the beginning here was that if you use this drill, you get better insertion torque. Well, clearly, if you undersize the osteotomy in some form or fashion, you will have more compression in the bone and therefore more torque during insertion. So that's no like that's science, right? But the marketing behind it was selling was selling dentistry on use our third party drills with your kits, with your implants to get better torque. And that's where, where, where the waters get a little murky. And I encourage you guys to make sure that when you're drilling your implants, you are using the drills that were assigned to that implant system. Don't mix and match. That, that's a, that's a, a, a recipe for disaster, okay? And, and then off the record, off the record, if you want to do osteodensification, you do know that you can put your drill in reverse, right? So we have the the flutes on the drill are clockwise cut, and when you put the drill in reverse, it doesn't cut, but it expands. Uh, just make sure that you turn the RPMs down really low, and you didn't hear it here first, okay? So if you do that, I didn't recommend it. You just heard it from somewhere on the street, okay? But you can do that. So if you have a case where you're in D4 bone, it's like styrofoam, and you want to skip the last two drills, but you want to use the, the drill itself as an osteotome. So just put it in the hole and not even spin it. You, I do that sometimes, as well as put it in the hole and just reverse, just put it in reverse a couple of turns is all it takes because you're in spongy bone that's D4. It's, 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 it's super soft. You don't have to spin it for a long time. Just spin it a little bit. It'll compress the bone and then move on to your final implant placement. If you like this video, give us a like, subscribe, and share with your friends. If you haven't had a chance to experience one of our courses, come see what you've been missing at Stanley Institute.